Uh, hello, I'm Martin Blazer. I'm the director of the Center for Biotechnology and Medicine, or CABM, at Rutgers University. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with CABM faculty member, Dr. Arnold Rapson. Uh, he's the director of the Child Health Institute of New Jersey and a professor in the departments of pediatrics, pharmacology, pathology, and lab medicine at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School. Uh, welcome, Arnold. Nice to talk to you today. Uh, thank you very much, Marty. Tell us a little about your uh, your early education, your career before you got to Cabin. Okay. So, so I think you know, and and uh, some of the folks watching may know that I actually was introduced to biomedical science very early, having been the child of parents who were biomedical researchers and uh, a physician scientists. Um, I ended up going to Brown Medical School in a seven year combined program that was both uh, heavily undergraduate science as well as medical school. And during that period, I was very serious about research, even from the early days, and worked in a biochemistry lab doing ribosomal RNA processing in E. coli, which has actually come full circle to some of the work we're doing now. Um, I went on to do residency in pathology at Harvard at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Again, my parents were both pathologists, and it seemed like a natural segue to doing um, uh, molecular medicine um, as it was evolving. I moved on to the National Institutes of Health and the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and was there from 1981 to 1990, working with a, a real unsung, unsung hero but scientific giant named Malcolm Martin. Um, and Malcolm trained some of the top molecular biologists in the world. And in we were working on an obscure backwater of virology called endogenous retroviruses, including in humans, a DNA, when in 1983, Malcolm came back from Paris with a vial of the human immunodeficiency virus in his pocket. And from there, we started doing molecular biology of HIV. So for about seven years at NIH, I uh, elucidated really fundamental mechanisms of gene regulation in HIV, including, and we'll talk maybe a little later, um, importantly aspects of how HIV latency is established and regulated. And uh, then I moved to Cabham in 1990, and uh, happily, very happily. And so, 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 what brought you here? What brought you to Cabham? Well, the, well, the, the, the I, I actually thought I'd be in an IH my whole life, honestly, but I ended up with a, a set of family circumstances where I needed to be in the New York area, and I interviewed it at, at most of the New York um, uh, medical centers, including very seriously at NYU, so we might have actually overlapped had I gone in that direction. But I will say that what Aaron Shatkin was developing at CABM um, and the junior faculty, almost all of whom are still at CABM, who I met in my interview at CABM, just just absolutely turned me on with excitement and enthusiasm. So the faculty, you know, many of whom still there with Peter Lobel, Steve Anderson, Celine Jolinas, and Eddie Arnold and Aaron were my were my interview team basically when I came up to look. Um, and it was that combination of, of tremendous intellectual firepower, but also just really genuinely warm and interested people that brought me to Cabin. Great, that's a great story. So, what's your what's your lab working on today? Um, so we have uh, gone sort of. What I'd say is take one step back and say my overall interest has always been in the molecular basis of human disease. What are sort of the gene regulation, particularly kinds of aspects that go wrong in disease? And, and through my background in postdoc and even my parents, I've been interested in particularly in viral infections and human viral infections, particularly human retroviruses. So that's been a consistent theme, and we have come and gone with that through the years, working on HIV and working on the human T-cell leukemia virus type 1. And we actually are back now on HIV doing a project um, with our neuroscientists um, uh, across Rutgers, um, and particularly at the Child Health Institute, on HIV infection of brain organoids and uh, potential to understand pathogenesis of how HIV-induced dementia occurs. So that's a, a very exciting project in the lab right now. But how, how are you uh, kind of approaching the science of that project? 
Well, for this one, it's it, it, it actually hits a theme that's been true my whole career is very collaboratively. So this is not something I would have done were it not for the fact that my lab sits uh, really just a couple of bays down in an open lab from Dr. Ji Peng Pang, who's a wonderful neuroscientist here at Rutgers and Child Health Institute, who was working on organoid, uh, brain organoids in collaboration with Ron Hart and Peng Zhang at, at Rutgers and School of Arts and Sciences. So it's it, the theme of my career and many ways has been sitting, talking with people about what their systems are, what my systems are, and looking for the overlaps and looking, as David Baltimore would say, for the analogies that drive science forward. David has talked about science being driven forward by analogy and looking for those. And that's how this concept came up um, in particular. Yeah. So do you have other roles at Rutgers uh, in the scientific community you want to talk about? Um, very briefly, I could talk for a long time about that, but very briefly, as you alluded to, I'm the director of the Child Health Institute of New Jersey um, and have been so privileged to be able to continue to be a part of CABM during this as we built the Child Health Institute up and uh, really recruited some wonderful young scientists here at CABM. Previously, I was deputy director of the Cancer Institute of New Jersey and again had been privileged to be able to continue a strong interaction with CABM during that and to continue to be part of the CABM community. Right. Uh, how do you interact with students and trainees and others in your lab environment? A uh, very much uh, open door is, I think, the best way to put it. I am my door is open to trainees in my own lab and across my institute, and for that matter, trainees of people who I, you know, my colleagues at CABM. Should they have any reason to talk to me, the door is essentially always open. And right. If I'm a meeting, right. we just reschedule and get them in as soon as we can. Okay, so here's the tough question. Uh, you know, let, let's say let's say we were writing your obituary. Uh, how, how would you like to be remembered for your scientific work? I, I that that is a tough question, and I'll, I'll I'll take it in two pieces. Number one, the most important thing to be remembered for was helping junior faculty develop their own research programs, and I I have done that um, actually informally at CABM. Um, uh, many years ago, even after arriving early, and then more formally at the Cancer Institute, and now very much so at the Child Health Institute with the people who we've recruited through the years. So the most important thing, if if I could my if I could at all be reflect my memory reflected in the achievements and accomplishments of some of these people, that would be the most important. Scientifically, I think that work we did during the 90, 80s and nineties on how HIV is regulated and particularly how latency is turned on and off really was the basis for a lot of sort of therapeutic approaches now. So I think that's a very important piece that I'd like to like people to, to remember. Great, beautiful, but on both counts. So are there any important subjects we missed? Um, I, I think I just, I, you know, close with sort of as a general principle in science, the concept that I learned from every one of my mentors and parents too, is that everything in science is related to everything else. And by that, I mean, and I know you live this way too, Marty, that, you know, we, I started studying ribosome biogenesis in E. coli as an undergraduate and another project in our lab now, which came out of some of our cancer work and collaborations with scientists at the Waxman has come right back to studying ribosome biogenesis in mammalian cells. So you never know how it works. You just follow, do good science, follow the leads, and everything you do is related to everything else. Last point on, as an example of that, is we're studying regulation of HIV. And in that context, collaboratively with Celine Jolinas at CABM, one of the great scientists and people I've ever been privileged to work with, we came across mutations of these NF-kappa B proteins in human cancer and human lymphomas. And that was a major sort of move, uh, a step forward in the lab and, and in the field as well. So everything is related to everything else. That's how we've tried to follow our science and continue to. Beautiful. Great. All right, Arnold, thank you so much. Uh, great interview. And uh, I, I look forward to seeing you on the web.